pursuant to chapter, we are meeting pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, uh, which allows us to meet um, via remote uh, means. Uh, we will do our best to make sure that members of the public who are attending the meeting have an opportunity to participate in public comment. <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, call us to order by asking you to signify that you are here vocally, so we'll make sure that we can all be heard. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Here. Christine? Here. Anika? Here. Alex? Here. And Paul? Present. And we are joined by Ken uh, Romeo from uh, Colliers. So How thank you? you all for, thank you all for coming. The first um, item on our agenda is to thank Angie. So Angie has already shown herself to be completely indispensable to the work of the committee. We're really grateful for her, um, her good offices. Next is uh, the approval of the minutes of the meeting of January 27th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Christine. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Paul. Okay, um, discussion of the minutes, corrections. Okay, uh, we ready to vote. And again, I'll call on you and ask you to signify vocally that you either approve the minutes, yes, or you do not, no. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Anika? Yes. Alex? Yes. Thank you, Paul. Yes. And Austin says yes. So thank you for that. Next item on the agenda is the financial update from Sean. Sure. So there's a couple things. Um, so one quick update is that since the last meeting, uh, Sharon, I think, has submitted our first uh, quarterly, is it quarterly or monthly, Sharon, that re uh, report where we have to show it's how month. the monthly so monthly we will report to the mblc the grant funds that we have in our possession if they've earned any interest um, this is part of one of the reasons why we had to set up a separate bank account um, specifically to to house these funds so i forget i think maybe we made eight hundred dollars or something like that in the first first month so um, we'll we'll track that as we go um, and then the second thing i'll just say to people is more just a, a caution is interest rates are rising pretty quickly. Um, our financial advisors working on updating uh, the projection of the of the debt schedule um, based on a couple different models depending on how how quickly we move through the project. And he just he warned me that um, it's moving even a little faster up than he was expecting. So it doesn't affect the total amount that we're going to borrow, but it does affect what our annual payment would be. Sure. Um, we were conservative when we did our initial projection, so hopefully things are still within the numbers that we use. But if, if it gets to the place where it um, goes beyond that, I'll, I'll certainly let the committee know. Thank you, Sean. Okay, questions for Sean? Okay, thank you, Sean. Next is an update from Colliers. So uh, Ken, are you gonna do the update from Colliers? Yeah, I can do it. Uh, Ken Guyette said he is on. I just don't know uh, where he is. He was calling in because oh, he's in the oh, car. Hold on one second. Angie, do we know whether Ken Guyette is somewhere in Zoom land? Could his, could his zip, uh, area could be 860? Yes, that would be I'm, him. Okay, I'm bringing him in. Thank you, Angie. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I see his number there now. There so uh, currently uh, we're in the process. We've had a couple of back and forths with FAA. And at this point um, I have received this afternoon at about two o'clock while I was on the road uh, response from them. So we're still working through their contract at this point, but uh, we're making good progress. I think in the next, I'd say week, we should hopefully have something that we can share with everybody. It's uh, been, you know, as you know, a, a long journey, but uh, I think we're coming to the end on this one. Good. And uh, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're in a good place 
uh, with them and being able to recommend, uh, you know, uh, review by the committee and hopefully uh, bringing them on board. That's correct. So, yep. Yep. So, uh, and with that, I know there's been uh, other discussion and I think we're going to talk some uh, later on about uh, subcommittees and that type of thing. So uh, we can talk about then, but I don't know if there's uh, anything else, Ken Guyette, that you wanted uh, to hit on in particular at this point? Uh, just again, that once, that once we get the designer on board, we will start um, putting together some of the big milestone schedules that'll need to be followed as we're going through the process. And that'll give everybody that roadmap on, on how we're gonna get to the, to the finish line on this. So, um, so far so good. We're having really good conversations with FAA and um, take it from there. Great. Yeah, and that, that, that's what I was going to say is our next big one uh, after getting that is uh, developing that schedule and bringing that to the committee also. And then uh, as we discussed, uh, you know, working on uh, relocation and the plan for that, because we've got to tackle that early, as everyone Absolutely. knows. So yeah. I know I'm preaching uh, to the choir, so to speak here, but uh, I can't can't not bring that up uh, just because it is uh, a big, big issue, big item for us to tackle. So, Sean, uh, thank you, Ken. I have a question just to clarify. Once uh, Colliers has straightened things out with FAA and makes the recommendation to this committee, and if the committee were to endorse the recommendation, uh, kind of what happens from that point on? Is there a process that needs to happen in town, approval, or uh, beyond the, the building committee? Um, so, yeah, I think we, we've been working through um, making sure everything is in order so that we can extend the contract once that comes in. So um, we're sort of still in that process, but um, if everything is good to go in terms of everything up to this point, then the town manager would have the ability to, to extend Sign the contract. Up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, think, I think we were going to look for the endorsement of this committee before he does that. Yeah, and presumably, Paul, if it makes sense to you, we would want to just get the um, uh, the support of the Library Board of Trustees as well. Sure, I mean, we have two trustees here. If they would like to do that, that's up to them. Yeah, well, I think probably it makes sense to try to keep keep the trustees um, informed and involved. Uh, sure. You know, you've got the sign off for approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions for Colliers? Well, thank you to both of you for the work that you're doing with uh, FAA and we, we look for its good results. The next item is a discussion of uh, subcommittees and we have actually framed motions. So I think maybe the best way to proceed is actually to get someone to move the motions about the subcommittees and uh, then get them seconded and then have a discussion of the motions. So uh, let's go first with the motion to establish the design ad hoc uh, committee. And again, in the course of talking about that committee, we can talk more generally about the, the subcommittee. So is there a, a motion? Uh, would someone please move this motion to establish the ad hoc, uh, the design ad hoc committee? I make a motion to approve the uh design subcommittee. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. Great. So I just want to say a word about the, uh, the proposal. Basically, the proposal is to take the uh, six members when we have our new uh, uh, Jones Building Committee member and kind of divide them up, three on one committee and three on another. And uh, I will serve as a kind of coordinator. I won't chair those committees. They'll choose their own chairs. I will serve a kind of ex officio on those committees. So discussion of the uh, proposed charge to the uh, design um, ad hoc committee. Uh, Christine. Um, I'll start. With number one, um, I just happened to notice that, well, first, we don't have our second resident 
um, member. Mm -hmm. And uh, the charges for the two residents was one was to be more outreach and one was to be more design. And I just happened to notice that, you know, we're trying to come together as a committee. We sort of have the library people and we have the town people. And I just noticed they just got on this proposed, they got split. So it was still all library people and design and then a town councilor and the two residents um, uh, all on the outreach. And I just thought maybe a little more shuffle would be good to get everybody up to speed and kind of work together. Uh, other comments following up on Christine? You're a chatty group. <laughs> yeah, really? It's, it, I feel like I'm back in my own class. So, <laughs> Paul? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think um, we can talk about the membership. I, maybe we should charge, we should discuss the charge and what the committees are supposed to do first. And then we can talk about what, who should be on those committees. That sure. might be the way to, and we can look for volunteers who would like to serve on committees and see what, who would like to serve and talk about it that way. So, other thoughts about the charge? Christine? So good point to follow up. I guess that was what I also didn't convey. Thanks, Paul, is that are you, we don't usually like put people's names on charges, do we? Cause it's, cause members could change and it could shift or grow or larger. So on that first one, I was just, how did it, is it just going to be the three members? I know that there was a sustainability group already created. Were they going to be part of this? Um, and do we need other people to be on it? So as I understand the process, uh, what we're trying to do is to appoint members of this committee as members of these committees. The members of the committee, these ad hoc committees can work with others as advisors. Uh, I think that's what was contemplated here. Uh, other thoughts about the charge? I think Paul's oh. hands up. It's up, yep. up again. <laughs> I'll yep. lower it this time. So yeah, just to be just to clarify on on that. Um, so to comply with the open meeting law, the easiest way to do it is this appointment processes. The recommendation is that we appoint subcommittees of the members of this group, mm -hmm. and then if there are other people who want to participate, they can voluntarily join in, and that's sort of what the elementary school building committee is doing. So the subcommittee and the voting membership would be a subcommittee of this group, and there's no other action. This com this group can make its own subcommittees. If you extend it beyond with members of the public, then it goes through the town manager appointment process, and just I think just it's for s simplicity. It doesn't mean we don't want others to participate. We can invite others in, especially with special skill sets or you know, community access to the certain communities or something like that. So I think that that's that would be the way to do it is to try to, you know, make sure that people can participate and have it more uh, inclusive. So that's the uh, most efficient way to create these committees. Okay. Other conversation about the charge to the design, Sean. Is, is the thought that um, in terms of sustainability, the design committee would take the lead on that? Yes, at least okay. that's, that's the thought. Okay. And, and the, the bring the design committee, yep. Okay. Okay, other thoughts about the charge to the design committee and following Paul, we'll come back to the membership in a sec. Uh, Anika. Yes, so as we talk about these committees, would you all share who um, made the suggestions that I believe was you and, and Sharon, um, how you came to the decisions and why? So about the membership or about the charge? Charge. Uh, Sharon, do you want to speak about the substance of the charge? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I spoke with Athena O'Keefe, who gave me some guidelines for uh, setting up charges. And this is what um, town council has done. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I used that as a framework. And then I, I worked with the OPM um, to basically come up to come up with the tasks. And um, yeah. So And so this is pretty much, you know, at a minimum what they'll be doing. Um, 
and to it, it's, it, it, it's like, because we're all starting and, and we're really just meeting and getting to know each other. I feel like this was like a place to start. So don't feel like, um, you're stepping on anybody's toes. So if you hate what you've got in front of you, raise your hand and destroy it all and start from scratch if you want, if, you know. But really, if there's something here that, that doesn't make any sense, then bring it on. Okay, other, other thoughts about the charge to the design committee? Christine. Only that I, I noticed like on number three, just as an example, the third bullet, like it says the projects designers, um, uh, maybe that should be spelled out like FA and your OPM or what, you know, just list it all instead of just sort of um, project designers because there's more than even sub consultants, I mean, whatever. Sure. So I, sure. I feel like it was, uh, it's generic intentionally, so we haven't contracted with FAA yet, so I'm not sure that we're in a place to actually name FAA quite yet. And, and as you all know, um, you know, FAA is going to have their own interior design team, et cetera, you know, landscape architect team, sustainability engineers, and all of that. So I feel like that's why uh, general was better. I just thought maybe add OPM, like you're also working with them too. because I don't see them mentioned in here. So the proposal is to add OPM after designers in the third bullet. Is that right, Christine? Or the, I think the OPM should be added a little bit more in the, like, they're, they're not mentioned in there that I can see anywhere. And I just- Right, I was just trying to get a sense of where, where, where would you like them mentioned? Uh, I guess it's somewhere in number three, the design ad hoc committee shall. Um, and then the only place I see the designers where it might fit was that third bullet, bullet. But I mean, that is part of what the design team would be doing. You're working with your OPM to develop. So are you asking, again, just so I'll be clear, do you want it to say working with the project's designers and the OPM? If you want to keep it generic like that, we know who our OPM is, but yeah. It's just when you're checking boxes of expectations and you're saying, who did we check in? Who do we give credit to? Who are they so listening would you like to? to yeah. yeah. Would you like to move to amend the third bullet to add the phrase and the owner's project manager after project designers? May, may I suggest a procedural suggestion? Sure. So before we actually do motions and stuff, let's maybe we can talk through all the changes we want to make and then it make it's because this voting is very cumbersome because of the roll call every time. So okay. does that make sense? Okay. Anything else about the charge? You know, uh, thinking about it, raising my hand again, then I'll lower it. So like where I noticed it was that third bullet, but maybe it could be its own bullet. I mean, and just sort of stating the obvious that the design ad hoc committee will work, you know, with their project manager, pro uh, project designer and the OPM, you know, in collecting information and, for consideration and to develop recommendations because my problem with it, just putting it on the third bullet is it's only talking about interior and exterior design. When the truth is the de design committee will be working from beginning to end. Okay. Other thoughts about the charge? Austin, can I, um, can I make one more comment? Sure. Um, so if, if this committee is the committee that's gonna be charged with, um, in the, the the sustainability group, we may want to add that as a bullet point too. Um, under working with designers on interior and exterior design, either th another bullet point or something that says and um, you know net zero elements or not net zero, but uh, energy efficiency elements of the project or something along those lines. 
I just want to point out that the reference to the Jones Library Sustainability Committee is in the second bullet. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense in terms of who they're getting input from. Yep. Um, but I still think it might make sense to be explicit that they're going to, this is going to be the body that makes recommendations around how we um, meet the EUI targets that we set or the, the energy efficiency targets that we set. I don't know if interior and exterior design is intuitively to people means sustainability components of the project. Sure. Okay, Sharon and then Paul. Yeah, I just wanted to say, Sean, I totally appreciate what you're saying there. And that's one of the reasons why I listed so many different groups in <laughs> bullet point two. So, so, you know, there are so many important, let's call them spokes of this project and sustainability is one of them. Historic preservation is another, the landscaping is another. And I'm, I don't think that any one spoke is necessarily more important than the other. Although certainly the experts in those spokes would disagree with me, but um, instead of calling out one particular spoke or the other, I was putting them all in in bullet two to cut, to level the playing field. I'm not against what you're saying. I'm I'm just trying to explain what my thought was. Sure, Paul. So I have a, a couple things. One, uh, a sort of procedural, not procedural, but I would suggest that we call these subcommittees instead of ad hoc committees. I think these are going to be standing committees that are going to be with us the entire length of the project. So that's a small thing, to, but I think we should call, consider these as subcommittees of this body. Mm -hmm. um, ad hoc implies like it's set up for a specific thing, but this is going to be, these two committees are very important for us. Um, second point is, um, you know, it, so the way it's written is the chair um, is a member plus three voting members, which leaves it with four members of the committee of each subcommittee. So I would suggest that we make that four voting members uh, that there be the, that we make it five voting members, the the um, ex officio member plus four members of this committee. If that makes it, I, I, I float that out there and see what people think because it's a it's another it's additional person who's willing who need to be willing to participate and then just one clarification just this is a committee that advises this body this larger Correct. body that it's not giving advice and direction to the designer it's saying they're putting the the legwork into it and coming back to this body saying okay here's the big critical decision what does this larger body think right so that's just a clarification make sure we're all on the same page on that great other thoughts about the charge? Sharon? Yeah, I just want to do a little pushback to Paul, uh, and it has to do with increasing the size. Uh, so as my buddy Austin always says, even when you have an even number of people, if there is a tie, it means the motion does not pass. So I don't think you necessarily need an odd number of people. And the only reason I'm pushing back is because the more people you have involved, the more difficult and complicated it is to actually make decisions. And since it's like you just said, it's all coming back to this full committee anyways, mm -hmm. everybody's eventually gonna have their say. Mm -hmm. Paul, are you, are you, are you in? I, and the response to that, to, to Sharon's response, um, and, and, the, and the reason to have five is to, to be able to get a quorum, um, so that if one, you know, if you, if one person is out, you can't, you basically, it's really hard to function if two people miss a meeting, you, you can still, if they're, and if these are time sensitive, anything with time sensitive, I mean, and, and Austin may not, I mean, he's a, if he were not a voting member, that would be different because his presence would be welcome, but not required to create a quorum. But right now his presence is required at all, each of these committees yeah. to create a quorum. Otherwise everybody has to show every time. So I think, we, I think there are two options. One is have, ex, have Austin has a chair be an ex officio non-voting member, which case it, it doesn't help lead to the quorum or add another person to help us achieve quorum. Yep. Okay, other thoughts about the charge to the design proposed subcommittee? One last one for me. I still think that second bullet of number three reads a little funny. Um, maybe, I think maybe the word 
after the committees are listed, something along the lines of work with the designer to revise the previous schematics. I think the way it reads now, it it sounds like the ad hoc committee is going to revise the schematics to address the concerns um, raised by Joint's library staff and master, uh, the MBLC. Um, so maybe it's just work with the designer, like it says in the bullet point after that. Okay. Other thoughts about the charge? Okay, so let's try to kind of shape this and amend this motion. And I'm going to try to work backwards, but I'm sure certainly I've forgotten some of the suggestions. So let's um, let's start with Christine. So Christine, you want to make a motion to amend the motion about the design committee? I guess uh, I'd like to add a, a bullet, which maybe okay. that could take care of part of the issue with that second bullet and then the third bullet it could be removed but just something about that this committee is to work with the project designer and the OPM um, and just leave but like from for the entire duration or something like that and then Yeah, because the third bullet, now that I read it, and it's saying working with the designers to make recommendations. I mean, uh, so Christine, can do it. yeah, it's the limiting because it's just talking about interior and exterior, I guess. That, so Sharon was saying how there's many spokes and I just don't know why like that one area got pulled out like into this when we don't mention lots of other elements like so is it, is it would it be helpful to you to have a bullet that simply says the design ad hoc committee shall work with the project's designers and the opm period and then perhaps on have all design on all design aspects of the project maybe and that just you know state the obvious a little bit work with but the then, project designers and the OPM on all design aspects of the project. And then it's sort of generic, but it encompasses everything then that will ever be considered design, whether it be landscaping or interior stuff or exterior stuff. Okay. Even so, sustainability could get thrown in there. Again, just so that we can move through this. So there's now a motion to amend this motion is there a second to that amendment? Alex? I'll, I'll make a second. And I was also going to ask, maybe somebody could put this up so we can see it as a working document, just because it's easier to sort of follow. Sure. Angie, are you yeah. able to make that magic? Yes, I believe I have it open. Um, and can you want to share screen? Is that Alex? Would that be helpful? So I, I guess I'm suggesting that be a new first bullet under three, and then I'm saying we could remove the third bullet. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, again, Angie, are you going to put up the charge? There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. So the motion is to the first bullet under number three is we'll work with the uh, project designers and the OPM and Christine, what was the end of it? Um, on on all, all aspects. Design aspects of the building project. Great. And OPM on all. Aspects of the design of the building project. Thank you. Okay, any discussion of this motion and the motion would then remove bullet number three. So this would, would we add this bullet and take out the third one. Okay, are we ready to vote on this uh, proposed amendment? Okay. Uh, Yes, you're in favor. No, you're opposed. Sean. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Christine. 
Christine? Um, can I make a comment? <laughs> uh, sure. So, so I assume that the investigate and recommend still becomes the second bullet by itself as a separate issue. And then the will work, it becomes its first bullet. Am I looking at the same? Oh. There you go. Okay. That groovy. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Christine, <laughs> voting on your amendment. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. Anika. Yes. Thank you, Anika. Paul. Yes. Alex. Yes. And George. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you, Christine. Very helpful. OK. Um, Sean, were you satisfied about the conversation about the sustainability yeah, committee? I'm, as long as we all have the same understanding, that I'm not, right. um, it's not a huge issue for me. Great. So as I understood it, there were two other things that we wanted to uh, come back to. One is making sure that this is called a subcommittee rather than an ad hoc committee. Uh, Paul, that was your suggestion? Correct. Uh, would you like to make it as a motion? Uh, I move that we, wherever the word ad hoc committee is state we substitute the word subcommittee thank you and uh is there a second i'll second. second thank you christine okay any discussion of the proposal okay sean oh i'm sorry christine uh are we changing the three to a four or what, what happened with number one? We're, we're, we're talking about subcommittee versus ad hoc committee. And the oh, proposal is that. to substitute the word subcommittee wherever ad hoc is used. Oh, yep. Are we gonna do every little change and vote? I'm just... Well, I think what we have to do, I don't know whether these are little changes or not. I think probably what we wanna do is wanna agree on what we're changing and then vote to change it. Okay. So. Christine, I think I was to you on whether or not you are voting yes. to. Okay. Uh, Sharon, did I get you? Yeah. Okay. Anika. I'm sorry. This is to go from go to subcommittees. Correct? From ad hoc to subcommittee, substituting word subcommittee wherever ad hoc was used before. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Paul. Y yes. Alex. Yes. George. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you, Paul. And then, Paul, you want to uh, talk a little bit more about the membership? You want to? Yeah. So I think um, if it's three plus the ex officio all voting members, then I think we should have move it to five. So that, again, I just think the demands on whoever the chair is might be with. And if we create, we're setting a standard for all future subcommittees. We may create additional subcommittees, maybe not, hopefully not, but we don't know. Um, so I, I think that we have two options. One is to make the ex officio member a non-voting member of each committee. Um, and the other is to have the ex officio member be a voting member, but that we have four voting, four other members on as well. And um, I mean, we can change this at any time. If we want to go with what we have now, it's okay. I just think that it's, I'm, I'm worried about us having some time sensitive things that the design yeah. specifically the design ad hoc committee needs to do and they don't get a quorum. That's yeah. the reason. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a preference, Paul, as between either of those solutions? I don't, I, I, I um, just for respecting people's times, I would have the, um, Ex officio be a non-voting member so that there's there's less of a demand on the ex officio member. Okay. So uh, is there any thoughts about that? Okay. Can, can you so, restate what we're deciding between three and how many? Three versus what number? So I can so right now there are four members of this of each subcommittee. The ex officio member, which is the chair plus three other members who will be appointed by the chair, right? So that's option one. That's a current proposal. Right. Option one would be uh, three members appointed by the chair. The, the chair um, serves as an ex officio member, meaning the chair can show up or doesn't. It doesn't matter to the work of the committee. 
a, a, a three member committee is hard uh, because then two members talk to each other. It's, it's a, you know, it's an open meeting law issue, right? That's one of the challenges of a three member committee. Um, if we change where it says three to four, then it's a, it can be a five member committee. You need three people to show up to act. Um, and it, it sort of, it, it gives you a little, it, it, it allows more particip participation by the members of this committee uh, to participate. And I think I would, so I guess as I talk it through, I would suggest we make uh, where it says three, we make that four voting members. So your 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 thought now is to make it four voting members yep. plus the chair ex officio who's voting members. So you have five. Yes. yes. All right. Other and, if, and if all five show up, it's a how many members are on the full committee? Nine. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's right. why I think that's why we went with the low number because yeah. yeah if you have okay. five, you, yeah. That's a committee of this whole group. Good point. So. Are we now back to what we have Staff now? Staff in jail, BC. Paul, are you now saying that we don't want to have that because then it's a quorum of this committee? I'm, af I'm afraid so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, so, Sean. Angela, yes, you're not you're not muted, Justin. So you know. Thank you. So we're back to the question of how many members on the committee. So Paul, is your proposal now? Well, what is your proposal now, Paul? <laughs> um, I kind of feel like I've been let out of Egypt and I'm wandering in Sinai, Paul. <laughs> so point us to the promised land. Um, maybe we just leave it as is and see and okay. if, and if we can't get the quorum or can't and we run issues, we come back and revisit it. All right. So are you are you good with this? I am. All right. Then the next question is the question that I think Christine raised about um, membership. But I think, Paul, what your suggestion was that we actually vote on the charge and separate it from the membership. Was that right? Yes, because the chair, it's not a vote of the committee to appoint the members. It's the vote, yep. it's the decision of the yep. chair, the way yep. the charge is written. If we're, if the committee doesn't want the chair to make the appointments and the committee wants to make the appointments, we should say that now. Right. And, okay. So and, and my, Austin, my, Austin, there's a hand raised. I'm not sure if you can see it. I can't see it, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Whose hand is, is that? Uh, is raised? I, was saying, Anika, I had my hand up, but they were um, the question you, was answered. But um, I did want to ask just to follow up with Paul's suggestion. Um, so, are we equipped to fill these numbers now, or would we have would we have to have people doubling up on these committees, or would that mean that we'd have to add another one or, or two people to the overall committee? So I think the idea was to take the committee, assign three members to one committee and three to another. The third on the outreach committee would be someone who's yet to be appointed. But the idea of, of, of this design was that there would be no, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to be on more than one of these two committees. Now, if we want to do more committees later, then that may of course change. Okay, so yeah, Christine, thank you. So the last meeting, it, uh, I think we came up with five, which could be too many, or maybe that's enough, or we need more, but um, yeah. Uh, so is everyone on this committee expected to be on at least one committee, and some people will have to be on two or possibly three? Is that the design of the subcommittees we're looking at. The design of the, of the subcommittees, I think informed by what Paul said earlier, is that we would try to have membership of the subcommittees come from this committee. So there would be members of this committee that would serve on the committees, they would be appointed by this committee to any subcommittees that we create. For right now, we know that we need these two committees. So what we've done is try to 
divide the membership of the committee. That's what the proposal was. Some serve on the design committee, some serve on the outreach committee. As new committees are required, we might have to ask people, I would expect we could ask people to serve on more than one subcommittee. Okay. Christine, is your hand still up? Uh, no, sorry. Okay. Okay, other thoughts about the number of members? Okay, so I believe that what we should be doing now is voting basically on number one. Is everybody comfortable with what's there in number one? Are we going to remove the names? We, we can remove the names. Okay. There we go. So, Christine, are you, is that your hand again? Yeah. An ad hoc will change to subcommittee. Every time the word ad hoc is used, it will be changed to subcommittee. Thank you. Okay, are we ready to vote now on the motion to establish the design subcommittee? Okay. Can I, so, can I just say one more quick edit? Um, sure. Just, just put a period after JLBC and um, yeah, delete out as follows. Thank you, Sean. And then no more comments, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're ready to vote. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Anika? Yes. Paul? Yes. Alex? Yes. George? Yes. And Austin votes yes. So let's leave the question of membership of the committee's of the committees aside for the moment and let's look at the charge of the next committee and this is a motion to establish the outreach subcommittee and again angie if you can just take the names off of number one that would be that would be fabulous uh and then again following um uh, what sean said please take as follows off of number one Okay, great. Okay, so discussion of the charge to the outreach subcommittee. Uh, Paul? Just a quick, uh, just to make sure we remove the second committee where it says subcommittee committee <laughs> throughout the document, but that, that can be done after the fact. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Christine. This is another lightweight question. So here it says LBC. Are mm -hmm. we at J, I mean, JLBC or like what is going to be our official acronym? Because I see it. Well, is it yeah, going to we're, be? We're using JLBC. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. I didn't know if it had changed. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Alex. Um, I would like to, hold on, sorry, I have too many things open. Um, I'd like to amend, um, bullet point three, um, because I personally would really like this committee to be in charge of designing, uh, community outreach versus uh, sort of mandating what it should look like. Um, so my thought was to change the language to say the outreach ad hoc committee shall design and develop an outreach plan, which will include at a minimum, and then the bullets that are below, mm -hmm. so that they've got the power to do what they think based on. Mm -hmm. At a minimum. And Angie, would you just highlight that in yellow? Because, uh, again, what we're doing is we're just going to talk about these changes and then come back to them. Okay, Sean. And then my, 
Oh, I'm sorry. And now just to make one second. Yeah, the bullet four. I couldn't tell if bullet four was supposed to come down this charge also, or whether it was like a cut and paste and didn't get deleted. So I wasn't entirely sure about that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Sean, before I call on you, Sharon, can you clarify number four? Yeah. No, I thought so. I put it there intentionally. It wasn't. It wasn't just a co copy and paste. Um, the thinking was so, you know, the people, the outreach committee, they're going to go out into the community and, and to get input from people we haven't heard from yet. And uh, I'd like to think that the results of that, the feedback that we're going to hear could, should uh, affect the designs. So that, that's why I left it there. Great. Thank you. Very helpful. Sean. So my, um, my comment is related to that one. So to be consistent with the charge above, I think it should say, she'll prov um, recommendations to the design subcommittee during the schematic and design development phases versus JLBC. So this makes it sound like the subcommittee yeah. is gonna provide input directly to the JLBC, but I think up above, we said that that input's gonna go to the design subcommittee so who this will is, then make design yeah. recommendations so that they're only coming from one subcommittee. Right, so this is number four you're talking about, Sean? Yeah, number four, just where it says yep. JLBC, replace that with design subcommittee. Yeah, right in that line um, to the right. Or uh, explanation reclamation to the design subcommittee. Great. Great, and if you'd highlight that in yellow, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sean, are you, are you done? I think so, yeah. Okay, Christine. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like it um, explained how people think the framework goes with this outreach committee. You know, I'm hearing that we should, you know, they should be designing the outreach plan. Um, but then I was just wondering, so who does the outreach, like meaning if the outreach group says, we want the website to do this and we want the social media to say this, I assume the outreach committee is not actually designing the website and it could be multiple websites, the town, and I don't know who the webmasters or whatever are for those. Um, so do they get um, people they're working with then? Like, so meaning how we had said in the last one, the uh, design group will work with the designer or work with the OPM or these subcommittees. So is this group going to work with I don't know, the webmaster of the town website and the webmaster of the library and the social media, the town communicate, Brianna, whatever she is like. Um, so we're designing, there's an outreach plan that has to be developed, then it's who are they working with to get it done? And then they also have, so they'll collect maybe surveys, let's just say from a website or whatever. And they have these events where they're soliciting public information, which gets collected somehow and then presented or we're saying now only to the design subgroup or does it get brought back to us as a group? So anyways, I'm just trying to figure out the flow chart, how this is going and who's actually doing the work and who is it to be tied in. Great, very helpful. Anika. You muted Anika. I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. Uh, so <laughs> my question is around uh, also social media and outreach and assuming that, you know, um, when the thoughts are put together of who would be on it, who will be on, you're having people that have also experience with, with outreach and, and how this happens with coordination between um, like the town's social media and the library. I guess it was also around that. Would this be also a separate um, entity. So there, uh, so we have multiple ways to reach community, especially community that you know may not always go on the town side or the the library side. So we're getting casting the broadest reach, and um, you know, input in in that design and and what does that look like? So I guess how that works and what the kind of wiggle room or collaboration and with whom. Um, wasn't as clear to me. All right, Paul. So this question for Ken in terms of what resources the OPM will bring to whether you know a website or um, that's the kind of support services that you'll bring to the table on this, Ken. 
yeah, typically um, in the past, what we've done is helped out with, you know, frequently asked questions in coordination with the design team on postings and those type of uh, things. And then if there's questions with expertise, naturally, uh, you know, leaning on the design team members to get the, that information uh, provided, whether it's uh, video clips of maybe something where they spoke at uh, an event on uh, an item that might've come up or just an overview of the project. Okay. Well, so one help? of the other things that we could, we, one of the other things we could also offer is the, um, the use of our Collier's 360 um, mobile project management platform and, and having that dashboard, which shows the current status of the project be fully transparent to whatever, whatever uh, website was developed and have it attached right to that website. So people that go onto that website can see exactly where the project is at any given moment. Well, that's helpful. Yeah, that, so I think that's helpful. And I think, um, you know, I think is, uh, clearly the, the subcommittee isn't going to be doing the work of posting social media things. But and so I think Sharon ha has a very strong team and as does the town. And so our two teams can work together because um, a lot of investment has already been made in the Jones Library um, website which is a very nice website but when we when we come up with a project website we'll want to make sure we're, we're amplifying amplifying each other's comments i think yeah uh just one second alex i mean we might think about adding something to follow up on what christine raised uh, uh and again i'm not proposing it just uh, seeing whether or not this might help the subcommittee will work with appropriate town and library personnel and the OPM and designers as needed to execute its outreach plan. And that way we don't have to specify, you know, who's the webmaster here and who's the webmaster there. So we might want to come back to that as a possible addition. Alex. Um, yeah, and if if somebody wants to change tweak the language slightly, because definitely that wasn't my intent was was more about them determining their own process so that we could sort of look outside of the box. And yep. I would also add that um, during the during these last six years um, that we at the library have actually reached out to many community members who were not willing to serve on this committee because they couldn't make that time commitment but have expressed a lot of interest around being actively involved in the community outreach process so um, we do know that we definitely have some people in the community um, with experience around um, human-centered design who are uh, multilingual um, and who are excited to help out on this project so i will just Put that out there so people have the same frame of reference that we on the library know about. Great. Right. Thank you, Alex. Other thoughts about this charge? Alex, are your hand still up? Okay. So Let's see whether we can uh, uh, can do this. So uh, I guess I'd like to, uh, Christine, I hope this will, um, oh, go ahead. Just on that fourth one, it says the outreach shall provide input um, on the designs. I don't know if that's exactly what they're doing. Aren't they supposed to be like a conduit communicating what they're hearing and what they've collected and bringing it to more like the design committee and the designers. Because if they're coming, if they're providing an input on design too, then that's sort of another design committee. I think outreach is about getting it out there and then bringing it back and then bringing it to the design group. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think the intent of number four was this is the result of uh, the previous work. It's not independent of the previous work. So if if you if it would be helpful, we could say um, uh, number four after appropriate consultation with the community, the sub the outreach subcommittee shall provide. Would that be clarifying? Mm 
And if you'd highlight that in yellow, great. Okay, other thoughts about this charge? Okay, so I was gonna uh, propose that uh, we add this language, Angie, if you can uh, fit it in under, uh, under number three, I guess. So at the bottom of the fourth bullet, uh, under number three, uh, the subcommittee will work with uh, appropriate town and library personnel, comma, the OPM, comma, and the designers as needed to execute its outreach plan. Its outreach plan. Great, thank you. And if you'd highlight that in yellow. Okay, so let's um, let's go with the. If there's no further discussion, let's go with the proposal to change number three. Uh, the outreach committee shall design and develop an outreach plan which shall include, will include at a minimum and then the specifications below so awesome can good. i make one more quick sure uh, um Absolutely. just it's actually the same thing as below um angela number two where it says and make design recommendations to the jlbc i think again change that one to the design, to the design. subcommittee and Great. then i think that's consistent with number four thank you very much Sorry, that was last comment. That's okay. Okay, so are we ready to uh, uh, approve the change in number three? So, um, Alex, you want to move that we approve that change? Sure, I move that the changes as shown on the screen uh, be made to the proposed motion. On on uh, in in number three, or are you moving all of them? I move all of them. Let's just go hey, for no, it. That's that's efficient. Okay. Is there a second? Um, uh, and, uh, uh, I'm happy to second it as long as we have can do any. If there's any typographical things, we can fix it after. So doing sure. it hard, on the fly is hard. Sure. Okay. There's this motion has been made and seconded to approve the changes shown in yellow on the screen subject to needed typographical and grammatical fixes. Okay, Sean, how do you vote? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Sharon, how do you vote? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Christine, how do you vote? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, Anika? Yes. Thank you. Paul? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, we now have charges. So the next thing is that uh, the chair of the committee needs to make appointments to these committees. And I would be interested to hear what people's thoughts are or what their interests are, what their views are about the membership of the committees. Uh, Christine. Um, I guess I have a question for Paul. I was just wondering if we could have an update on the other resident member. Yes, um, we concluded um, interviews today and I made an appointment that has gone to the town council. The town council will review it at the TSO committee meeting on Thursday and then it will be presented to the entire council on the 28th. So by the hopefully the council will vote on the 28th. Christine. And just follow up question. Is this new person more of an outreach person or more of a design person or a, a kind of a both person? Uh, more of an outreach person. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Okay, so uh, again, uh, I'm interested in people's thoughts about uh, the proposal that I would make or the appointments that I would make it's, uh, pending hearing any other thoughts would be Alex, George, and Sharon to the design committee, Anika, Christine, and this new member to the outreach committee, Sharon. 
Yeah, so why don't we switch it to Christine, Sharon, and George for design and for outreach would be Anika, Alex, and the new member. That's my proposal. Okay. Um, Alex, are you willing? You know me, I want to do all the things. I'll put, I'll go anywhere I'm put. Right. Christine, are you willing? <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's do that. So uh, Sharon, George, and Christine on design, and Alex, uh, Anika, and the new member on um, the outreach committee, and I will serve ex officio. Okay. And uh, we will uh, need to convene, especially the outreach committee, I think as soon as we uh, have the, the uh, new member appointed. Okay, thank you. That's very, very helpful. Um, the, the next item is just to talk amongst ourselves, I think really to inform uh, the work that the outreach committee would do. And um, Anika, you were beginning this to talk a little bit about what are images of the outreach process? Uh, what are people's thoughts about what we hope to achieve? What are the kinds of things we want the committee to do? Ultimately, again, the committee will will make its decisions and recommendations. So do people have thoughts about outreach? Um, Angie, you could take down the screen share. That would be, that would be great. Thank you. So any thoughts about outreach? Alex? I was holding off hoping somebody else would raise a hand. Um, yeah, I I want to echo what Anika said. Um, I really um, and am excited at the prospect of coming up with an outreach plan that uh, that that brings that brings in people who may not be using the library right now, um, so we can learn more about why um, they're not using the library now, um, as well as really trying to reach out to um, people who don't typically go to the town website or have the ability to attend meetings or so I'm, the, my, my main focus that I wanna bring to it is, is really trying to do things differently to reach out to people we don't normally hear from. Um, and for me, nothing's off the table in terms of what that might look like. Um, you know, so that's that's uh, important for me. Um, so, yeah. Correct. Um, Other thoughts about outreach? Paul, Anika, and then Paul, Anika. You're muted, Anika. So oh, I gotta get it together today, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add to uh, what Alex said, um, you know, yes, definitely to focus on people who may not have been involved and really getting them excited. But, you know, just really creating those spaces or even, you know, people who have. I mean, I think there are going to be no shortage of opinions and questions around this and people wanting to be informed. So I think that the more we can do to do that and then, you know, ultimately, you know, build bridges and, you know, have as many ideas as we can to, you know, bring back and communicate clearly will be great. Great, thank you. Paul. Yes, yeah, so I think one of the important features of this charge for the outreach committee is that it, it it's, it's specifically designed to inform the design of the building. It's not just to do outreach, it's actually to take that outreach that's being done and then to communicate that back into the design. And I really like that as being part of the charge of this committee and that they, cause that has to be uh, why we're doing outreach is to make the design inform, inform the design from the people that we're talking to. So I appreciate that, whoever wrote that in there. Yeah, I just wanna inflect that just one uh, one one way for myself, I think that the first task of the outreach committee is to outreach to the community to explain who the Jones Library Building Committee is, what its work is, what its process will be. So I, I hope that really as soon as the committee is constituted, it can 
think about ways of just communicating who we are. Um, the attendance at this meeting, uh, there are two attendees at the meeting. And uh, I think that we want to, and we're grateful for their attendance, we want to make sure that the whole community knows um, what this committee is, what its charges are, what its functions are. Paul, are you still in? Yeah, I just wanted to also note that, you know, the town has three community participation officers. Angela is one of them. We also have Brianna Sunrid and Jennifer Moyston, who are all expert at expert. They're just really skilled at reaching into the community right. and bringing those resources to bear. So I um, engaging with them and in, including some of the assets that the town brings, like engage Amherst and things like that. Our, our, our staff can help support that as well, I think. Wonderful. Great. Other thoughts about outreach? Okay. Well, thank you for those. Oh, Christine. I just thought I remembered one um, that I think it's good that the outreach gets going as soon as possible because there is a part in our uh, charge that talks about, you know, uh, during schematic um, design and development because you want to get the most input in the beginning because as you actually move into design and once you're into build, it's really hard to, and to, you don't wanna give the public expectations that they can start really changing things then. And maybe the OPM can, you know, real world, you know, how does, you know, how do other projects you've worked on, you know, is it a little front loaded like that? And how do you uh, take ideas later on or explain to the public that, kind of it's too late or whatever. Great, very helpful. Alex. Yeah, I just have a question, I guess. Um, one of the things I think that the design committee is tasked with if I remember, was um, about the temporary location and temporary library services. And I guess I um, wanted to know what if <clears throat> any involvement community outreach process should have since I think COVID has changed a lot of things. And do, do we wanna engage the community about what temporary library services should look like or, or not? Um, Sharon, do you have a thought? Uh, you know, I love what you said before, Alex, you're absolutely open to anything. So yeah, I think the staff, uh, would absolutely be open to anything. I, right now, the mindset of the staff is they're actually really excited about this. They're thinking of this as an opportunity. So for two full years, we're not gonna have much of a space, you know, wherever it is that we are. And I think we're gonna be in several places. It's not gonna be pretty. And so it's going to, here's an opportunity for staff to actually get out, go out into the community and, and do the programming. And so um, I think that's a really great thing. Uh, so I, th I think that's where our mindset is now. But yeah, I, I think it's a great idea to have the outreach committee, uh, like take that uh, head on first, like first and foremost. Okay, uh, any other comments about outreach? All right, well, thank you. Thank you for those good thoughts. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our regular meeting schedule. So I think our regular meeting schedule we had imagined is every other week, uh, Tuesdays at 4.30. And that would mean our next meeting would be, I believe, uh, the 1st of March. And if you could pencil in on your calendars the every other Tuesday at 4.30, that would be that would be great. Paul, do we have any sense uh, of uh, when or if uh, in-person meetings are going to be um, welcome or possible? Mm -hmm. So right now, the state legislation allows us to meet remotely until April 1st. Um, after that, unless there's some uh, legislative relief, we will not be able to do this. Um, we will need to have a quorum in the room. Um, so it, that's the way it stands at this point. I mean, the world has changed. I mean, yeah. Zoom meetings are very convenient for everybody, whether we're going to be allowed to do it, whether we want to do it. And um, it's very, just so you know, you know, the council has been, has had some meetings that are hybrid meetings where there's some people are in the room, some people are remote. Um, 
in essence, what that is, is that every, it's really a Zoom meeting with a bunch of people happening to be in the yeah, same room. The same place. Um, technologically that we need an IT person to support that because it has to go through a sound system and it can screw up. So um, we can't really offer that so that technological support to every committee. So I think, you know, we don't want to lose the benefits that we've had of Zoom, people being able to watch and record every meeting, which is really a, a huge advantage. But how we move forward beyond that is just, a, it's a, and whether we're going to leave it up to the committees to decide, we haven't really decided that yet. Okay, but when we know that the first of March we're going to be on Zoom. We'll be yes. on Zoom at least through the month of March. Beyond, uh, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Christine, now those same rules um, for the subcommittees too, or do they have more flexibility? The same rules apply to every committee or subcommittee. Yes. Okay. All right. The next item is number eight, which is uh, correspondence. Uh, there correspondence that was copied to the committee. Uh, it was not addressed to the committee. It was addressed to, to state officials, uh, but wanted to make sure that if anybody had any thoughts or questions about that correspondence, uh, this would be a chance uh, to hear those thoughts or answer those questions. Yep, Christine. I'll just ask, is there going to be a follow-up with that or is it because there was a response? A follow-up? Like, I assume we're talking about the one that went to the state house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, is that sort of just done? Like, or do they actually have to come back and address more stuff? I think what happened, how the, the addressees of the letter responds is up to the addressees of the letter. We're not, we're not in control of how, when, or where, and what way they respond. And it doesn't hold up anything with us. Not it, to the best of my like knowledge. It's more like an FYI kind of thing. You've seen the response from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Yes. Um, I will say uh, that uh, on several occasions, not recently, but on several occasions, I've reached out and talked to staff at the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And I was told that they don't want to see designs until the designs are far enough along uh, in the design development phase. Uh, that oral communication was, I think, uh, validated by the response from the MBLC. Uh, that suggests we have done what we needed to do uh, and that their view is at an appropriate moment uh, when the design was further along, uh, we would go through the mass historic process. But we'll wait and see if there's any different response from the addressees of the letter. Okay. All right, anything, any other questions about the correspondence? Okay, next item is number nine, topics not anticipated uh, 48 hours in advance. Is there anything that's come up? Okay. We have an opportunity for public comment. So is there uh, any comment from our attendees? Okay, I see no. No signification, again, grateful for the attendance of the two members of the public. Okay, I wanna say um, before we adjourn, good work, everybody. I mean, we are, we are off and launched and uh, appreciate your care and thoroughness and thoughtfulness in working through the charges to the, uh, to the, to the subcommittees. So uh, really great gratitude for all your work. Okay, a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Paul, is there a second? Second. Christine, second. thank you. Is there a second? Okay. So I'm going to ask you to signify again vocally yes, you would approve, or no, you'd like to continue to meet. Sean. Uh, what's whatever? <laughs> what is the answer you're looking for here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> You notice that Sean becomes more compliant two hours into the meeting. <laughs> Sharon. Yes. Christine. Yes. 
Anika. Yes. Paul. Yes. George. Yes. Alex. Yes. And Austin votes yes. And Ken, thank you very much for attending and thank you for the work that you're doing. And I will look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. Stay safe, everybody.